I decided to make another fallow to go on one of my whirly gigs. This is the one I made earlier and I, I decided to have another go when I was at it so this time I've made one with a slightly different hat and I've also given him a big, a big ear on the back which will show up when it's painted and I'm going to put a pair of black glasses on him I've made him with a big fat nose as well this time so it's basically the same but the same dimensions as that so, that they're, so they'll be interchangeable and um, what I've done also after I've cut the character out which as you can see is about three quarters of an inch thick I've then rip the remaining spare parts down, the bits I cut off the sides down on the uh, circular saw and I'm going to use those now to make the arms. I can just about fit that piece, the one arm, on that off cut and that arm will easily fit on that so I'll draw around those and cut those out so that piece of wood hasn't been wasted so you see you don't waste that, you can use that for other parts. The thing is it's just as easy to paint two as it is one really it doesn't take long so by having an extra one at least it gives me that choice I can paint them both up and then decide which I want to use or as I say I can keep one as a spare for another one or make another whirly gig with it but you try and make the character as com comical as you can actually but um, I shan't know until I've painted them. Right we mark the arm out now and I'm just going to cut it out on the fret saw uh, I've got a fairly thick blade in here because it's not a very intricate cut, it's quite simple. So I've put the thicker blade in there because this is fairly thick stuff but it should cut through so we'll make a start on it. I'm not being too fussy about it because as I say it doesn't really matter how accurate it is. I've got the saw running fairly quick as well. go off the line when you're cutting, don't worry too much about it, you can just correct it, um, just keep going, you can do a sharp turn on this saw, like so, as long as you keep the thing moving. Don't worry too much about getting it perfect, because it really doesn't matter for this sort of thing. angle turn at the end here. You don't have to, if you're not used to doing this, you can easily do it another way. There we go. Right, so now we've got the main body cut out and we've got the two little arms cut out. What I'd normally do now, and you don't have to, um, before I do any more to it, I would generally tend to roughly mark out, if I've got an original pattern like this one, roughly mark the position of the arms, just put a pointer in there and then um, just drill a hole through ready so that you know what, roughly where his arm's going to go. You don't have to worry about making it the exact size, you can change that later, ream it out a bit or draw, do a bigger hole. And the same with the arms, it's easier if you do it now. Um, you can either just put it on the like that and just drill through that one if you've got it in the right position. Same with this one. If you don't want to do this you can just mark it, but you don't have to do this, but I find it easier. Once it's done, it's done, and that's the end of it. Right, that's the arm positions. Like I said, you can make the holes bigger if you want to later. Get that out of the way. So now, what you need to do next, uh, which I'm not going to show because it's pretty obvious, is the, these are obviously rather square. If you look at the one I've taken off, I've rounded all the corners off, and it does make it look a bit more realistic. Don't forget, if you look at it from the end point of view, like this, it won't look anything. Well, of course, it doesn't matter because you don't see it like that. When it's on the actual whirly gig and whirling away, you see it from this angle. And so it does look like a man stood there. If, you, if it is indeed a man you're trying to create, I'm not sure what. It looks more like a wizard, doesn't it? Or a witch's head. Actually, that's quite a good idea. I could make a witch, couldn't I? My daughter would like that. She likes witches. So, and this is rather thick. And I deliberately made them thick because in this case of the black, this is for the blacksmith. And he's going to have a, a little hammer in his hand. And um, if you make it too thin, it's more awkward. With this being quite thick like that, I can drill a hole through and put his hammer handle through uh, with a piece of dowel. And this will be thick enough not to split. Uh, also, by the time you've sanded it down, um, like this piece, if you take the corners off, it will make it look a lot thinner and it will look a lot more realistic. 
but that's the reason I make try and make them as thick as I can. You don't want them too thick, obviously I made them thinner than the main body. And the same with the main body, uh, as you'll see with this old one, poor worn out old thing, I've chamfered all the edges, ends, edges, sorry, edges. I've chamfered all the edges uh, and just sanded it roughly because it makes him look a bit more realistic. Um, Actually, what you can do, in, if you don't want to sand it, you don't like making a lot of dust, I mean, I'm too old to worry about it now, but what you can do is just get a sharp Stanley knife and just go along like this. It's quite good, actually. It's a, like a bit, I'm no good at wood carving, but it is a bit like wood carving. Watch your fingers, obviously. So you can go around it with a sharp knife. You don't have to be perfect. Just try and make sure you've got the grain the right way. Don't like the grains coming this way on this one. This is the grain here. So when you're cutting, you don't want to cut into the grain. Always cut across it like that, you see. You'll get a nice clean cut then. As I say, you don't need to be too fussy. It doesn't matter if he looks a bit crumpled and rumpled. If you if you cut the uh, quite a good chunk off with the with a knife, you can then get a bit of um, paper. A bit of abrasive paper, if you want to use its correct title. We always used to call it sandpaper, but actually it never was. It was made of glass, wasn't it? Glass paper. And you just go around. This is a bit coarse for that, but I'm just illustrating what you do. And then just go over it with that and give it a general sanding down. If you've got a little sanding machine, obviously you can do it a lot quicker. Um, but I find actually the knife is probably one of the best ways because you don't create a lot of nasty dust, do you? Because you get dust everywhere otherwise with sanding. Even with extraction systems, it's not perfect. I don't know why I'm jabbering on about this. Anyway, get the idea. Just round all the corners off to make him look a bit more like a person, I suppose. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you just if you just smooth the edges a little bit and painted it, a lot of it's in the painting. He'll look okay when he's painted, I think. I reckon he'd be quite good with that big hat on and the long nose. I thought I'd made it too long, actually, but I think I could have made it a bit longer still. It's quite good fun making these, so do have a go. Obviously, I don't need to say too much about that. That's just a horse with a jockey or with a rider. Um, as an afterthought, I wish I'd made him a bit more interesting in the character. I could have put a little hat on him or something and made him look a bit quirky because it always looks better. Uh, brighter colours you can paint, as I've said before, the, the more interesting they are. It's just got a pivot point there. And on the whirly gig, all that happens, it, this one's actually made of plywood, by the way, so it won't lie. You just pivot him around there, and it's a simple one. He just rocks about with a rocking motion. Now, these are some little characters I made for uh, uh, another whirly gig based on Shaun the Sheep. Um, if you live in the UK, you'll know about Shaun the Sheep. It's a little animated cartoon. <laughs> Very funny it is, actually. Uh, and I made um, that Sean, uh, and I made him with a, uh, so he moved about, jogged about like that. And then you've got Timmy, the baby one. I haven't varnished him. He's the baby. And then the pig, which I find very funny. And then I've got the old farmer, um, which goes on the end as a, as a sail. Um, I did make one, uh, but it is quite complicated to make. There's three movements on it. I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos. So it's quite a fit. If you're new to World of Gigs, I wouldn't attempt to make it. Now, obviously, you've got to be careful with these things because there's copyright and stuff when you get to things like Shaun the Sheep. So you've got to be careful. Obviously, if you're making it for your own use, that's fair enough. But don't. I wouldn't suggest you made these and tried selling them because they'd probably come after you. I had quite a bit of fun with them. As I say, I'm not very good at painting and drawing, but you don't notice it in the distance. I just copied him out from a picture. When I was making my German Shepherd and Burglar whirly gig, which you'll have seen in one of my other videos, I was making, cutting out some German Shepherds, and what I did, I cut out various shapes, sizes and patterns. Again, I think I found pictures on the internet, and then I just, I based them on that and just altered them slightly. Um, but I wasn't sure how to do it, so I just make different sizes and tried on until I found one that worked. And I think that was the final one because I wanted him to look as though he was running. So he just jogs about like that to give you some sort of movement. But that was a German Shepherd one. When it came to the burglar on the end, I made this one quite elaborate actually with separate fixed. I wanted him to, to, to move. It was too difficult to make him run in with several movements. So... What I did, I made this little character up and then I nailed and glued his arms on like that and sculpted them to make it look almost like a carving. But actually, at the end of the day, it was a waste of time because I think he'd be too heavy to move. Uh, you'd, all, you'd be alright just static, but... Uh, so in the end, I just did it like that, which was just a basic shape, like my others. Um, that's the pivot point there. Obviously, I haven't painted or drew anything on him, 
and he hasn't been rounded off because I made him a bit bigger in the end. The bigger they are, the better, I think. So, uh, you know, don't try and be too elaborate like that because it doesn't work. Simple one's better, probably.